morning, everyone. This is Father Don, and I'm glad to uh, be able to get together with you. As you can hear my dog in the background, he um, is not getting his undivided attention, so he's um, got a little huff to him. So uh, he has a little bling that goes on to my computer, and he knows I'm talking to other people instead of him. So um, the people have been chasing me for... Uh, for more um, teachings and things like that and masses and so I'm trying to keep up with it all and um, so um, as we gather in this session uh, there's just two things I want to focus on and again um, as we continue along as you know the um, governor has decided to reopen some of our um, places um, haircuts and whatnot um, and we'll see how that goes. Um, those places that have reopened have experienced some upticks. And again, we don't want to get this um, started all over again. The other thing, of course, is the interstate travel. You know, we have people going from New York to Florida and um, causing all sorts of havoc. So we'll do our best and uh, hopefully God will get us through this. I'd like to um, reflect on a... Um, Office of Reading that comes out from um, St. Gregory of Nyssa, NYSSA. St. Gregory does a great reading in the Office of Readings for Monday of the fifth week, which was this week, past week. And again, um, it just, um, looking at my notes in the, the margin, um, I wrote excellent. So it must be something that I want to refer back to. But before I get to that, let me just get to one of those um, psalms that I love. And like I said, a thousand times, um, Psalm 27. Um, my dream, again, is to do what I can do as being a good Christian and as a priest. But the Psalm 27, um, one of my most favorite lines, again, and also it's in a song form, which I hope to have at my funeral someday. And... Um, and it's based on this um, phrase. There is one thing I ask of the Lord, for this I long, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to savor the sweetness of the Lord, to behold his temple. So again, just that beautiful phrase, we realize that we don't belong to the world, and also um, that <clears throat> what we are experiencing is only temporary, and we hope to be able to um, keep focused on um, the fact that God doesn't say we can't be in the world, we can't live a good life here. But he's saying he wants to be a part of it and, and protect us like any good parent would from being harmed. So again, but our destiny, we have to make sure that each and every decision we make in the course of a given day does not disrupt or turn us in the wrong direction or up the wrong road or street or up against the wall, um, that our destiny always has to be the kingdom of heaven. So our dream and our destiny is always uh, to live in the house of the Lord forever. And um, whether it's here on earth or in heaven itself. And this is our goal. So let's keep that in mind. Let it be your little mantra for today. Um, that's Psalm 27. One thing I ask of the Lord for this I long, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to savor the sweetness of the Lord and to behold his temple sums up everything about the Christian life. So, um, getting back to St. Gregory, um, a great writer, of course, of the church. <clears throat> um, in the Office of Readings, it says, the reign of life has begun, the tyranny of death has ended. A new birth has taken place. A new life has come. A new order of existence has appeared. Our very nature has been transformed. Wow, does that capture Easter or what? We're still celebrating the Easter season because there's so much to unfold, like the other seasons of Christmas and even Pentecost, to say, what does this event mean? And again, how can we explain it? And it takes weeks for us to unfold some of these ideas and what they mean and implicate for us um, to live life and also uh, establish in our church. So a new life has begun. Okay, rising from the dead is pretty cool. And again, um, it is a new life. We're talking about someone coming into the world 
who took on human flesh, he didn't have to, but he did, our Lord Jesus Christ, took on uh, human flesh to live the life that we experience each and every day, its ups and downs, its hardships, its acceptances, and its rejections. And again, nobody knew more than he when he was hanging on the cross for no reason, except man had nobody else to blame. So they blamed God. So again, this new life has begun. His rising from the dead is something that establishes Christianity. Of the two feasts of the incarnation of Jesus coming on, taking on human flesh, that's the incarnation at Christmas, and the fact that he rose from the dead um, is also a highlight of his ministry. If we had to choose between the two and see which one we had to celebrate, as you know, Christmas has become so commercialized. Even Easter is um, a rite of spring, and Easter eggs and little chickies and um, and again, all those signs of life. And again, Catholic Church celebrates the Easter uh, resurrection of Jesus. So this new life is something beyond what we have always known and the fact that we live and breathe and die. It's basically the human existence. But again, a new life has begun. And since Jesus rises from the dead and then shows himself and then eats with the, uh, the apostles and then dines with them and instructs them and challenges them and exhorts them to receive the Holy Spirit so they can continue to do the work. Um, this new life has begun. As of the resurrection, you'll be sealed by the Holy Spirit. But the sentence says, the life of rain has begun. The tyranny of death is ended. So by being Christian and believing in Jesus and following him as the way, the truth, the life, we can experience eternal life, this victory over the tyranny of death. A lot of people just stop living right there and they think that's the end, and it's not. It's only the beginning of another life, which is what Jesus is trying to introduce us to. So a new birth takes place, a new life has come, a new order of existence has appeared. So we see this glorified Jesus. He seems to have a physical presence like he did before. They see him. He, he eats with them, um, he walks through doors. There's something different about him though, obviously. Walking through doors, um, vanishing from their sight. So this glorified Christ, we don't know exactly what it is, but it is a different state of life, which we will all share in. What Christ is today is what we hope to share in. So this new life is a divine life, a resurrected life, one who has victory over sin and death. And for those of us who believe him, we will come to enjoy it. So St. Gregory goes on, The birth is not brought about by human generation, by the will of man, or by the desire of the flesh, but merely by God. <clears throat> <clears throat> so this, this thing, this resurrected life, is a gift of God to his son Jesus for being faithful in his life, and in his death, he accomplished the plan to restore humanity back to paradise, to the way it was meant to be. And so Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father, and he awaits us with all the saints and angels in heaven. And so, again, um, but it's God's gift to us. It's not something we buy. It's not something we purchase. It's not something we can generate or create or manufacture. It's a gift of God. And we have to stop and say thank you for that from time to time. So it goes on to say, if we wonder how, I will explain in clear language. <laughs> say, Gregory, explaining in clear language? Okay, I'm dying to read this myself. It says, faith is the womb that conceives this new life. Well, we can get that from our human existence as well and understand that. Baptism, however, it says, the rebirth by which it is brought forth into the light of day. The church is its nurse. Oh, I'm drooling. I love this stuff. So again, we see the church as being a, a means of bringing the child out from the womb of death, allowing it to be baptized in the waters of life. And again, from the womb, this is bringing the child out from darkness of sin and death into the light of resurrection. So we share everything we need right then and there. 
when the baby's baptized, as I said a thousand times, when the baby is baptized, we are holding a saint. There's no sin in the child. If, God forbid, I drop the baby on its head and drown it or something or accidentally, um, you know, those terrible things that could always happen, I suppose, but don't, thank God. Um, but if something would happen, that child just had sudden death intro, um, syndrome or something, that child will go to heaven immediately because there's no sin. He's not old enough to go outside the church and, and immediately sin. It's not his will. He's disposed toward God. We're holding a saint at that time at baptism. Our job is to keep that child a saint. It's not always easy, but that's why we have the sacrament of reconciliation and communion. So what happens is that the church is the nurse. It's teaching is the milk. The milk, the teaching is the instruction that allows the child to be nourished with vitamin A and vitamin D, those things that build up the body and the soul. So its teachings are the milk and the bread from heaven is its food. Of course, we receive communion. The Eucharist, the Holy Eucharist, is the same food that was given to the apostles, same food that was given to the all the saints that preceded us. Why would we change? Why would we look elsewhere? It's only one way. I'm sorry. <laughs> so again, this is the wonderful gift of our Eucharist in the real presence of God. And then it says, the food is brought to maturity by the practice of virtue. Okay, that's living the life. Okay, if you receive Christ, you should go out and show the world that you are Christ by your words and actions. So the practice of virtue, the good life, not the evil life, but good virtuous life as opposed to vices um, is lived out by the Christian. It is wedded to wisdom. So only as Jesus used to say, you fool, when he said the fool, that was the, that was the lowest of the low. I mean, you were not filled with wisdom when Jesus called you a fool. When everything is right in front of you and, you know, it says, go to this green light, follow this road, and you will get to heaven, and you don't do that, there's something wrong up here, up here. And again, it could be temptation, it could be any number of things, um, just following the crowd or whatever the, today's generation says is, you know, the way to go. Well, if it is, then what happens to all those other generations prior to this generation? This generation isn't any smarter than the last one. So again, um, so again, we have to take that collection of wisdom over the centuries and to produce a, a, a pool or a source for wisdom to be drawn, okay? And um, so it says it gives birth to hope. So again, a lot of people, when you when you see all these people arguing with the church and have a, a little fix with this pope or teaching to the church or something, they're filled with anger, first of all, and they get a little chip in their shoulder about this or that. Um, but are they hopeful? Just, just take a peek at that. Are they hopeful, people? If their way is the way to, for us to follow, then we should follow it. But if the way of Jesus is the way to follow, then let's follow that. Then we'll be filled with hope. Okay? Its home is the kingdom. Its rich inheritance, the joys of paradise. Its end is not death, but the blessed and everlasting life prepared for those who are worthy. It's not just for everybody, folks. Not everybody's seeking it. Not everybody wants it. And if you don't want it, then God doesn't want it for you either. But he does want it for you. By his nature, he wants it for everybody. His role to come into the world is to save everyone. Everybody has a choice to accept the gift and open it and use it. Or they don't have to open it. They can return it, say, no thanks, this isn't for me, it's not my lifestyle, and live with the consequences. So paradise will be for those who are worthy. So again, this is the day the Lord has made, a day far different from those made when the world was first created and which are measured by the passage of time. So again, we saw the day, the first day, the second day, and so we start seeing this creation of time and space difference and, um, you know, things that God created in our world 
We're not all the same. We were not meant to be the same. But again, um, there's something going to be eternal, it says. That's basically what it's saying. It's not going to be measured by days. It's going to be just, just be. It's just going to be paradise, okay? So there won't be any question of uh, checking our clocks and see if we where we have to be at 5 o'clock. We'll be safe. So this is the beginning of a new creation on this day. As the prophets say, God made, makes a new heaven and a new earth. What is the new heaven, you may ask? It is the firmament of our faith in Christ. What is the new earth? A good heart, a heart like the earth, which drinks up the rain that falls on it and yields a rich harvest. So our life will again, um, not by all the sins we've created. God's not interested in what we've done that way. He is interested in how well we've loved. So again, practicing virtue, um, and being grateful, and again, expressing our love of God and neighbor is the journey. In this new creation, purity of life is the sun, the virtue are the stars, transparent goodness in the air, and the depths of the riches of wisdom and knowledge, the sea. Sound doctrine, the divine teachings, are the grass and plants that feed God's flock. The people whom he shepherds are, in, are keeping the commandments is the fruit born from the trees. So if God gives us a tree of goodness, we can only eat goodness, and we should produce goodness for those that follow us. On this day, it's created true man, the man made in the image and likeness of God. Okay, so that's a key point. We lost that in paradise. When we chose not to follow God's will, when Adam and Eve chose to eat from the tree of good and evil, they had a complete knowledge of good and evil. And unfortunately, that meant suffering and death. They wanted it, they got it. So again, uh, this is what Jesus is trying to correct as he comes to earth and bring us back to that original wholeness and the image of likeness so we can be like it was meant to be, that there was nothing separating us from God or Adam and Eve when they were first born. So as Jesus says, I ascend to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. He wouldn't be speaking about those terms if he didn't know it. And again, uh, who are we to say, you know, well, we'd have to say he's not God. We'd have to say he's not the son of the father because he's he's directly saying that to us. The father and I are one and and that um, my God and your God. So um, he's going back to the father who is his God and my God and your God. And again, this is where he's waiting for us. So wonderful good news, it says here. He who for our sake became like us in order to make us his brothers and sisters now presents to his true father his own humanity in order to draw all his kindred up to him. So he came down to earth to take on humanity so that we might rise and be more divine. What a wonderful, wonderful ancient reading of the, the church fathers. So again, no wonder I wrote excellent on that. These are the things we have to um, nibble on each day, just a phrase or a paragraph and just to see, you know, this, okay, this is what it's all about. You know, it's not just the coming in and leaving church. It's the actual um, surrender of our lives to those of the, who have walked the path, who've talked the talk. And again, in doing so, we'll join them someday. Maybe even fill with our own wisdom and leave some testament for the future church. This is our hope. This is the fruit of eating from the tree of goodness. So thank you for joining me again and again. Um, please stay safe. Stay, I want to say stay sober, but that is in the scriptures. <laughs> stay safe. Keep a distance. And again, um, stay healthy. And we'll see each other again. And until that time, um, let's uh, give honor to our Blessed Lady, whose month of May we honor her as the Mother of God and our spiritual mother. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, Father and the Son, and Holy Spirit. 
Amen. St. Joseph, pray for us. Have a great day.